mostly because I had a baby nine weeks ago and my NSD jacket doesn't fit. And it's also because this jacket belonged to Mary Kay Ash. Oh. Wow. Her jacket. It was given to me by sales director Becky Manning. Becky has had a Mary Kay business more than 49 years. Wow. She lived here in Dallas and bought this jacket at Mary Kay Ash's garage sale 33 years ago when <laughs> Mary Kay God. moved from her pink house to her roundhouse. Wow. Becky treasured this jacket, but told me it was time to pass it on to the next generation. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. Well, this jacket has custom purple shoulder pads sewn in. And Mary Kay Ash's favorite color was purple, and she loved shoulder pads. <laughs> she believed that they made her shoulders look wider, and her waist look thinner, and that's definitely the look I'm going for. <laughs> at 25 years old, I submitted my beauty consultant agreement. And that year, at seminar 2006, I sat right over there. I remember thinking, everyone was really old. <laughs> 18 years later, I have new team members completing their online beauty agreement who were born in 2006. Yeah, talk about a full circle moment, right? Well, a few months ago at Leadership Conference, Mary Kay Ash's grandson, CEO Ryan Rogers, explained his four imperatives for growth in 2024. One of them is making Mary Kay relevant and appealing to the next generation by working with all generations. Mary Kay Ash understood the importance of being relevant to women of all ages, backgrounds, and statuses. This company has remained strong because we both anticipate and embrace change. Mary Kay's products have changed, the car program has changed, even the style of our jackets have changed. But our principles and core values have remained the same. solidify this company for another 60 years and beyond, we must attract the next generation. And look at how many generations are in this room. If you're a baby boomer born between 1946 and 1964, please stand. <laughs>
Generation Z appreciates transparent and visual communication. They prefer using Snapchat, YouTube, TikTok, and FaceTime. They value video, voice demand, and a mobile-only approach. So let's look at how we can apply that knowledge with an example. Baby boomers who want to connect with Gen Z should not call and leave a voicemail. Instead, use text or instant message. When returning that communication, Gen Zers who want to connect with baby boomers should not FaceTime or DM them on social media. But instead, make a phone call or set up a face-to-face -face appointment. It's key that we keep one another's preferences in mind when booking, coaching, and team building with different generations. Even more important than preferences, I encourage you to look for women who, regardless of their generation, align with Mary Kay's values and principles. There is a difference between attracting people to us and convincing them to be attracted to us. I have found that if I have to convince people to join my team, I also have to convince them to book parties and attend education. Great team members look for a great match. Yes, they offer the opportunity to everyone, but they're mindful of what both sides bring to the table. The best team builders are also the best listeners. Mary Kay Ash attracted all generations because she listened and she led with love. Listened and led with love. She taught us to envision a sign around every woman's neck that said, make me feel important. Regardless of someone's generation, listening, caring, and leading them with love is timeless, cross-generational, and builds genuine connection. My second skincare party was with a hostess named Barbara. She was in her late 50s. She and all of her guests had bronze skin. I had zero experience with our bronze foundations. The night before the party, I tested all the bronze shades on my face to try to better understand the colors. Well, that didn't help because at the party, they all looked orange. I was so mortified, I didn't even do the table clothes or share the opportunity. Yet, at the end of the party, Barbara came up to me and she said, I want to join your team. Shocked, I said, you do? <laughs> she said, yeah, everyone is buying products and you didn't even give us the right foundation color. <laughs> I, I can totally do this. <laughs> well, Barbara joined my team that night and taught me how to properly match bronze foundation shades. She also taught me that I didn't have to be perfect or to know everything to team build. Perhaps, most importantly, she taught me the importance of having a diverse customer base and team. I became highly intentional about sharing Mary Kay products with women of all ages and ethnicities. And I have found that a diverse and multi-generational customer base turns into a diverse and multi-generational team, which fosters a sense of belonging that surpasses race or age. My personal team now includes men and women ages 18 to 83 who speak more than seven languages. Oh, wow. This did not happen by accident, but intention. My personal team member, Cindy Martrain, is a baby boomer. She is 65 years young and is a paralegal at a top law office in Louisiana. She's a wife, mother, and a grandmother. Cindy is loyal to the Mary Kay product line and was attracted to the opportunity to supplement her retirement income. She is a very strong in-person skincare party, but was initially challenged with navigating working virtually. I remember at one of our Zoom meetings, she 
was beyond frustrated. Her camera wasn't working, her name wasn't showing up on the screen, and she was about ready to throw her computer out the window. I asked, Cindy, talk to your grandkids in Texas. She quickly replied, over FaceTime. I then asked, have you considered using your phone to do FaceTime skincare parties? I'll never forget her face lighting up. The next month, she finished the IQ, and she is here at seminar as a Chevy Trex driving fellow oh. I knew Cindy would be a strong cell structure and add so much wisdom, life experience, and stability to our sharp area. She now works her business both in person and virtually and has taught our area so much about building strong relationships, but also how to do quick and fast FaceTime appointments. She even holds her unit meetings on FaceTime. And P.S., her grandkids are so excited for her to earn the use of a pink Cadillac. Also here at Seminar is my personal team member, Joanna Zing. She's a millennial in her late 30s who teaches Cantonese at Stanford University. She messaged me on Instagram because she moved from Hong Kong to California and was looking for a beauty consultant. She happened to see that I had been at a Mary Kay Center in China and had mutual friends. We started talking on Instagram and building a friendship. She is here as a star team builder with her team member, Nick Young. Last week, I had a conversation with Sharp Cells Director Kimberly George. Kim is a retired naval officer who was the fifth African-American female to command a combat ship. Wow. She was telling me about her new hotshot team member, Mariah, who Kim met outside of a UPS store. Mariah is 19 years old and part of Gen Z. She had never heard of Mary Kay, but not Kim's pink Cadillac was really cute. Kim booked Mariah in the parking lot, facial her the next day, and Mariah submitted her beauty consultant agreement. Mariah has not held a traditional skincare party yet, or even been to a new beauty consultant education, but she has added three team members and sold the products through Snapchat. Kimberly is 43 years old and is a Gen Xer. So I asked her, are you on Snapchat? She said, well, I am now. <laughs> Mary Kay Corporate has heavily promoted TikTok lately, and to be transparent, I feel like I just figured out Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> but Mariah and Kim's story gave me the push to join TikTok. I'm looking for more Gen Z leaders, and guess what? They're on Snapchat and TikTok. I have a whopping 33 followers on TikTok and have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm watching YouTube videos and I'm figuring it out. I believe if Mary Kay Ash was alive today, she would be on all social platforms, learning from up and coming generations. In fact, Mary Kay Ash was one of the first people to embrace email back in the day. Mary Kay Ash understood the importance of raising up and investing in the next generation of leaders. Brian told me that every week in college, on the same day, at the same time, his grandmother, Mary Kay Ash, would call him to ask him to come work for her. Every week. Mary Kay Ash knew Brian. The next generation of her family was key to the success and the next generation of this company. The day I submitted my agreement 18 years ago, my mom said, Kristen, you will achieve and do far more for this company than I ever have. Now, I distinctly remember saying, Mom, you're a national sales director and I haven't even held a party yet. <laughs> but little did Mom or I know, in the years before,
before, Mary Kay Ash had presented Ryan with her book on people management. And on the inside cover, she wrote to Ryan, anything your dad and I have done, you will be able to do it better. Friends, this room is filled with women who have dedicated their life to Mary Kay Cosmetics. Serving and representing our company for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and beyond. We stand as the number one global cosmetic giant we are because of you. Thank you for your longevity, mentorship, and leadership. Not forget, we are one generation away from being a company of women who have never met or were never trained by Mary Kay Ash. We, the women in this room, are the next generation of Mary Kay. And it's up to us to find and raise up the leaders who join us in shepherding this company and our culture into the future. As we enter the halls of national sales directors at corporate, the phrase, keepers of the dream, appears in gold letters above the entrance. There's no more city words than those to describe the position. So if you're committed to being a keeper of the dream, I want you to put your hand on your heart and say out loud, Mary Kay, Mary Cash's dream was that mothers would have a business they loved so much that they would want their daughters and granddaughters to follow in their footsteps. And as we heard before, Ryan's hope is to pass the presidency on to his daughter, Everly. And I pray my daughter, Lily, will follow in her grandmother's oh. and my footsteps. <laughs> have a legacy to leave. We get to ensure the opportunity Mary Kay Ash created lives on for my daughter and yours and theirs. Mary Kay, you can count on me and you can count on us. Thank you.